Welcome to the next section about asynchronous behavior. In this section, we're going to learn how we can add asynchronous behavior, for example, by defining and implementing asynchronous EJPs, or by defining and firing asynchronous CDI events. We're also going to look how we can manage threats and do the threading of our enterprise application, and how we can define timers to make use of scheduled jobs. And then we're also going to see what asynchronous JAXRS resources are and how to use them. So the first video is about asynchronous EJBs. We're going to see how we can define asynchronous EJBs using the asynchronous annotation, and then how these asynchronous methods can return some values. Also, we're going to see what the impact on our scopes are. So imagine we have a car manufacturer class again, and now within this process, we want well, to further process a car. Let's say we can inject and use a so-called car processor that can process well, new cars. And this car processor, let's say, can process new cars. So let's define this class. Let's say this class resides in the control package and has the method process new car. And now, for example, this method might take a while. So let's say, just for the example, we wait for two seconds. Log support park nanos is like thread.sleep without the exception. And then we have a result of our processing. And then processing is done, just as an example. And now, of course, if we would call this like that, then this would wait for two seconds and then our result would only be finished for two seconds. So let's say we want to call this in a separate thread. And a simple way to do so is using asynchronous EJBs. So imagine this class here is a stateless EJB, a stateless session bean, and we define and annotate the business method with at asynchronous. And by doing so, this is now an asynchronous business method and will be executed in its own thread. Similarly, we could specify the annotation on class level, then it's valid for all the business methods. And now, once that method is called, here the calling thread will immediately return, and that will be executed within its own thread. So normally, we do not return anything here, since the result may not be there yet, like it is the case here. What we could also do is that we can return a future, a future object of something, for example, a future of string, and then just return the result, but not directly, but by wrapping it in a so-called async a, um, result that comes from EJB, and then as a helpful wrapper for our result, where now the calling class can acquire the future, and then call some more methods on it. For example, ask whether it's already done, or get the result with some timeout, and so on and so forth. But usually, we just define this as void method in a fire and forget fashion, and then call this behavior that at some point my my return. And then, we, what we also have to keep in mind are scopes. For example, we cannot simply inject um, a bean with a greater scope. For example, a stateful scope, since we cannot be sure that at this point the scope is still active while that method executes because the calling method well my hate might have a smaller scope and might already be be done and the http se session for example might also already be ended so we have to take care that ideal we ideally we only use stateless processes here but this is now a way how to call methods in an asynchronous way in its own thread and now the execution of that method will immediately return. We can immediately return the car and then at some point the processing will be finished.